Okay, so I'm not sure if the video is going to wind up saving tonight or not. Again, we are having issues with Facebook this evening, and it's highly unusual. You know, Facebook tends to be a very stable platform, so I don't know what's going on. Um, but I do want to be able to get on here and give it a try and see, since I had promised everyone that I would be here this evening. Um, plus, you know, I was working on trying to make sure everything was together here. I'd already tried one video to save it, and I don't think it's saved to the group, which is sad. Oh, somebody joined me, so that's promising. Um, I haven't had anybody be able to join in my last video. No one joined in my last video. But um, I'm going to try again here and see if we can get things up and running. I don't know, again, what's going on with Facebook this evening, and people may have a hard time signing in. I have no idea. But it does speak to the issue of um, looking to start at my YouTube channel and be able to have us meet on YouTube instead. Um, and doing that, then potentially we would be able to skirt issues like this this evening. Also, um, I was looking at um, not just doing YouTube, but in creating our new website, we're looking forward to having our own forum at, on our website, and I'm really excited about that. The forum will only be available to members um, at this point. I'm looking at um, members, the cost of membership to the group and to having, you know, like a private forum on our website, probably around $50 a year. Um, so something to consider because I think I will I mean, I'll still be in this group here on Facebook also, um, but I will turn more of my time and attention to the forum group during the day and then just in the evenings be on Facebook um, doing things for the IEP group. So um, let's see. So the website, the forum, YouTube, and I think that that kind of covers like where we're working on the social media aspect. I think YouTube would be a great addition um, since we are having problems with Facebook this evening. Hopefully people can write in your comments. I have had a difficult time posting to the group today. I have tried several times to comment and make posts and I'm not able to do so. So um, hopefully you will be able to ask questions if you can PM me, potentially you can private message me if you have that way to contact me um, and send any questions that you would like to discuss tonight. I had started on time and I don't know what's happened to that video. Nobody had signed in. I was worried about there being issues. So I did close that video down and I've started this one. Um, I'm not sure if, I don't even think the first video I did saved. So I'm not sure if this one tonight will save because of what's going on Facebook. I have no idea. Um, it's, it's rather crazy tonight because Facebook is typically so stable. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's really odd. And I'm getting very little information as to what's going on on Facebook that's caused this, you know, kind of technical problem and technical glitch. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, so yeah, like I said, I was trying to post in the group that I was on Facebook Live. Hey, my post posted, yay! So maybe my issues on Facebook are starting to resolve. Um, if that's the case, that would be great because I've been trying to comment on your post today. I've seen your post and I'm terribly sorry if you haven't seen me comment, but it's because I literally have not been able to make comments. Every time I try to make a comment in, in my own group, I'm running into a problem. And that's why I was mentioning about in the development of our website at aesa.group, I am looking to have our own forums um, in our own website. And so it is not only something that I can control better, um, but you know, hopefully we won't have any technical glitches. And if we do, then I'll be able to get them resolved. Whereas I'm sort of at the whim of Facebook at the moment. So um, I know some people have 
signed on and are watching this. So good evening. I don't see any posts, so I don't know what you guys might want to talk about this evening for certain. When I do post that I'll be doing a Facebook Live, I would love it if you guys have specific questions or topics that you would like for me to discuss and just comment in the thread. I was trying to discuss some of the things that have been posted in the group, um, which include Michelle had posted about, um, you know, what happens to your child in a contained classroom and then you cancel the IEP. So as a parent, you can refuse special education services. That said, the school can also fight back. So um, if your child has a significant delay, the school isn't just going to throw your child into a general education classroom. They will fight back with you. And that may include taking you to due process because they have an interest in your child. Um, and if so, if your child, if you're withdrawing them from special education at that school, but you're not withdrawing them from the school, then this potentially could be a problem and they may very well take you to due process. So all of that is something to consider. Um, with, you know, if you decide to deny services, I think what's better is not to, to withdraw your child from special education services, but instead go in and just take them to due process. I mean, if they're potentially going to take you to due, pro due process anyways, why not just beat them to the punch? Um, if that means you retain an attorney and, you know, like you're able to afford to retain an attorney and can do so, I highly suggest you do. Again, I am not an attorney and I cannot give you legal advice. Now, I am a legal scholar and I can give you information on the law and you are, by law, allowed to represent yourself. And so I highly encourage you to do so if you cannot afford an attorney because it's worth trying to fight for the services and the things that your child needs, I think. so. Um, oh, so John joined. Hi. Hi, honey. Um, yeah, so I can see some people are on, but I can't see the, who all has joined, and I haven't seen any. Um, that's my daughter, Margaret. Hi, Margaret. Yay, Dad has joined. Dad has joined. Finally. <laughs> I wanted him to join. Yay. So, Margaret is happy that you've joined. Anyways, um, so... <clears throat> Again, lots of technical difficulties tonight with Facebook. Not sure what's going on. Um, hopefully you can ask your questions. If you can't ask your questions here, please post them in the group because when I'm on here, I do read what's posted in the group or I try my best to read what's posted in the group. So that way I can answer still your questions this evening. Um, just if you post them in the group. Plus if you ask a question, not only can I answer it in the video, but then I can go back through in the group and I'll be able to answer all the questions in the group too. So um, let me see if there's anything. So I talked about Michelle's issue and withdrawing her child. And like I said, really think you should take the school to due process versus withdrawing your child. Because if you try to withdraw your child, you lose the the leverage, the mechanism for due process. Um, that's what a withdrawing your child from special education would mean. So I would just take them to due process anyways, because as a parent, legally, you are allowed to. Uh, Julie is saying that she had kind of two issues that, yay, she had, um, when it had gone before her superintendent of her district and had fought for and won an extra year of high school for her, her um, senior, and that's amazing. Do be aware if you have a child who is at the high school level, not only are they required to provide vocational services by the time your child is 16, okay, like they're required to provide them by the time that they are 16. Now they can start as early as 14, but you rarely see the school voluntarily start as early as 14, um, but they can. So just so you're aware and what to fight for. Also, if you need help with um, vocational information for your state, please post in the group or post here and I will answer those questions because there are state rules and laws that vary what they provide for vocational services. 
and vocational services are so important because that that is what helps set your child up for the rest of their life right so it's important to make sure that whatever they're working on for vocational services and training your child for that in the end it's going to be a you know a good career a productive job that maxes out your child's capacity to do whatever it is that they can do so i you know that's why i get discouraged when i hear people talking about well my child is cleaning in the cafeteria you know Yes, it's good for a child to learn how to follow directions, but hopefully they had been learning that before because it's an executive functioning kind of thing. And then once they're to the age of 16, we're now working on something that's truly, um, that's going to be that vocational, that vocational thing that we're going to do. No, you're not. You're not making spaghetti. No, you're not making spaghetti. Children, I'm on Facebook Live, and so I'm not going to argue with you, but you're not making spaghetti. So they've already been fed. This would be dinner two for them for spaghetti. Anyways, hi, Jackie. I'm glad you could join. I'm glad you had safe travels, by the way. Um, just waiting for you to swing down to Arizona. You come join me where it's warm and sunny. Um, anyway, so, so Julie was talking about how she had won the extra year for her senior. And then she said she was having problems with the school letting her child participate in the play that they're presenting at the school. And so they're saying that not only did she not have talent, but they're also saying that um, they, were, they were having a, hmm, I think she's kind of like an intensive practice schedule. Now, I don't know Julie's child really well. Um, but it sounds like they're being rather exclusionary and discriminatory. Now, that being said, Julie had mentioned that she believed that her child was the only senior who was denied a part in the play. And I could completely believe that is the case. I had, I mean, from I remember when I went to high school, when I was a senior in high school, all the seniors who had tried out for the play were given some part in the play. Even if that meant you were in the course singing or you were in some kind of group who basically was just standing on stage, right, to be, you know, people in the background. Um, so I don't understand why they can't manage to find a part for her daughter to be on stage or why they're denying her the ability to be on stage because she doesn't have to speak or sing to still have a presence on the stage. You know, her could, literally, it could be a walk through part. She just walks across the stage. Um, but no, they're not even doing that. So why I'm not sure. Um, if it, it, I believe that it would be worthy of an Office of Civil Rights case for discrimination if she can prove that every other senior who had tried out for that play was given a part in the play. So um, I think that would be kind of the threshold you might would need to meet. Though even if it wasn't the case or you weren't sure, it might still be worthy to file a complaint. There's nothing I hate more than school activities that exclude our children, and especially when they exclude our children for no particularly good reason, right? So um, I do think this would be worthy for a discrimination complaint. So I was talking about Carolyn. So Carolyn had posted um, information in the group this morning and she had posted some test scores and I've only looked through part of them um, but I will say so Carolyn's child um, and I was gonna say did she I was trying to figure out if she was had a son or a daughter um, and it, like I said and I haven't read through all these I've been having such a problem with Facebook today I haven't been on a whole lot because I've, every time I try to make comments, my comments in the IEP group today just keep disappearing. So, um, so what I did is I kind of discussed some of the test scores. And I did have a question about the CASL2 that was done because it has like an age range of 9 to 7. 
and with the age range of nine to seven on there, and it looks like the child that was tested was nine years, one month. If that is truly the case, and the age cutoff for that evaluation is nine years old, then that literally means the cutoff age is right up to when you turn nine. So if you did the test at nine years, one month, then these test scores technically are invalid. They are not valid test scores. Um, but the, what they did show was a problem in pragmatic language with um, inference with non-literal language. These are all issues children with autism tend to have. And then underneath was an ADOS score and for the ADOS score, I saw there was um, an issue with uh, not behavior, which made me wonder if the child is a girl, because usually girls score really low in the behavior, but there were a lot of issues with communication. Um, I think if you read my blog post, Autism in the Educational Setting, it will help you immensely because autism in the educational setting specifically discusses um, not only the difference between medical and educational autism, medical and educational therapy, but it also discusses, um, um, well, it discuss a whole lot about pragmatic language, social language, and why it's important. And I include a whole lot of information in there about um, essentially peer-reviewed journal articles on why that information is so important. So um, again, just something to consider um, as a way to get some information and some points of reference for help. So I'm going back through here and I'm looking. Um, so Jessica said, I've considered representing, so Jessica posted, by the way, under the Facebook group live post in the group. So I can see her post here. So if you cannot post in this, children, please be quiet, both of you. Um, so if you cannot post in this thread of the Facebook live, then please post in the group. James, please be quiet with your mouth. Then. Um, go ahead and post in the actual IEP group itself, and hopefully I can read your post there. So Jessica said, I've considered representing myself in state level due process. Are hearings open to the public? I would like to watch the live proceedings of the cases so I can assess how competent I might be, thanks. So that's a really great, great question. Um, actually, in a lot of cases, I believe you get to decide whether you want your case to be open to the public or not. Um, I would not worry too much about whether you think you are competent enough. That's one of those things I hear a lot, you know, like, oh, can I do it? Oh, you know, I'm not sure I can. Um, I hear that on all sorts of things, not only for, um, the due process, but for homeschooling your child, you know, like parents are very unsure about themselves. But let me tell you, if you are passionate about your child and you are willing to put in the work, right, to research information and et cetera, I'm telling you, it pays off. This is why I formed this group is so parents can be educated and sort of quit being run over by the schools. And I'm really hoping that you will consider whether you get to see any proceedings or not, that if you feel like you need to take the school to do process, due process, I hope you do. Um, we will help you in the group, take your, um, take your case to due process. Both Julie and Jackie have experience with due process, due process cases. I personally do not, but I was just lucky in the fact that I was able to get the things that I wanted or needed before I needed to go to due process. So um, I know Jackie and Julie have literal experience in due process, due process cases. Um, we can read over the information that you're filing for due process in this group. Um, you can retain J Jackie or myself to help you directly with your due process. 
Um, so there are several potential avenues for you to get help. Don't forget there are parent training centers. As a few people in my group have pointed out, they potentially could help you. You might be able to find some free help there. Um, if you have a strong enough case, it is not uncommon that you will have lawyers, special education lawyers, who will take your case on retainer. And so they will um, take your case, well, sorry, I misspoke. So not on retainer, they'll take your case on a contingency because they, you know, if they're willing to take your case on a contingency, then that lets you know your case is strong um, and they're willing to fight for you. And then what they're going to do is um, attorneys are allowed to sue the school district for their fees. And so that's what they're planning to do. They're planning to sue the school district for their fees. And they believe your um, case is so strong that they will win. And that's why they're willing to take it on contingency. So if you do feel like you are at that point where you need to go to due process, I hope that you at least consult with a few special education attorneys. Find out if any of them in your area wind up taking cases on um, contingency or not. And then also kind of get a feel for where you may have a case under the law. And I think that would give you kind of a big boost um, to be able to do that. So I hope, Jessica, that helped answer your question. Um, I was gonna say, we have had a couple of times in the past where we have had people post information in there with, um, you know, that they're filing for due process to essentially get our feedback. and find out, you know, are there any grammar mistakes? Does it make sense? Do we have any typos? Are there, is there a way to kind of clean it up and to have it be um, less confusing, essentially, to detail what happened? So um, we can definitely give you a lot of good feedback along with where violations may have occurred under the law. Okay, so. I see a few people are commenting and I see that people have signed in. So hello, all of you. Unfortunately, it's not telling me who all has signed in. Um, and again, Facebook has been having such an issue tonight with all the technical difficulties. I don't understand what is going on. Um, I am hoping to have a YouTube channel up soon so that potentially we could meet on YouTube also and do our live sessions on YouTube. So that would be another platform. And um, and if we have technical difficulties um, on Facebook for some reason that we definitely would be able to hop over to YouTube. Also um, be aware that AESA, the nonprofit is in the process of, um, we're, rent we're renovating our entire website. I'm really excited about these changes. Um, in the renovation of our website, we will have our own forum on the website. And I'm excited about this because it's difficult um, on Facebook, not only when we're having technical difficulties like this evening, but also because I don't own anything here on Facebook, right? So if something happens um, and my account is suspended or something, then I wouldn't be able to come back. and. I think it'll be great for us to jump over there onto our own forum. Also, I am um, in the forum and will to be able to join in the forum will cost. Um, and so I wanted to reassure people though, I'm, it's not like I'm abandoning Facebook. I will still be here, but my time on Facebook may just be limited to, um, you know, like three or four hours in the evening each day. Um, right now I spend an enormous amount of time normally on Facebook and I'm trying to move away from doing that, not only just for personal reasons, my, you know, children deserve my time um, and I do homeschool them. And so we need to address those things, but also because um, I'm looking to help AESA as the nonprofit to help to continue to flourish. And I know that my help and advice for advocacy is under high demand. I have a lot of private messages lately that I've been responding to um, and that takes my time too. And so I'm trying to move away from doing a lot of those things so that 
um, I have a little more balance between the work that I'm trying to do and my own personal life because I'm I have pretty much have no personal life at the moment but I enjoy being busy and my husband will tell you a hundred percent I very much enjoy being busy like this um, but I you know also want to make sure that I'm trying to make more of a balanced situation going on so um, so I know a few people have been liking and commenting on things in the group. So if you can post in the group, please do so. And then I will answer your questions there. So um, Julie just posted and she goes, so the saga continues with the play drama. And she said, pun intended. So it's good, Julie. I appreciate that. So she said, here's the latest email from the principal, who, by the way, has been a champion for my kids. And she said a couple of thoughts. Um, she said, one, there are about 14 students who did not get into the play. So um, Nancy and Russ gave parts to those who could sing at a good level. So um, she was like, not the right term. So I don't know if the principal said that or she did. Um, two, of the four so freshmen who made it, two, um, two not are related to Livingston School District staff. So. Oh, out of the four freshmen, essentially, who made it into the play, apparently two of them are related to school staff at the school. And they were chosen for their voice and one for their size and their voice. Um, three, there was another senior who did not get into the play. In past years, there have been seniors who did not make it. Wow, that's really interesting. And she said, four, this is all difficult. A few years ago, 90 students tried out for the Phantom of the Opera and only 45 got it. So if they are being that exclusionary in their play, um, yeah, you may not be able to file an Office of Civil Rights complaint for discrimination. Um, I'm really a bit surprised that at the school play that they are so exclusionary that they don't have some kind of walk on part where your daughter could participate um, or these other seniors who want to be in the play couldn't participate. So I just find it very odd. Um, so anyways, she goes on to say, all that being said, I did talk with Lynette and Nancy about the situation. We discussed Jamie being able to give out programs. So Jamie is her daughter. And she said she would have a costume, be in the program, and can take a bow at the end with the cast. So still not great, right? But that's kind of nice. At least she will get to go up on stage. She will get to wear a costume. She will get to hand out kind of the bill for the play. Um, and they said this opportunity was not given to the 14 students who did not get into the play. So, and they were saying, think about this as an option. Um, so Julie went on to comment. They said, one, there was a kid chosen that was completely tone deaf, but could act well. Well, I was going to say, I would probably say that's where the child's value was. Um, so, Two, she said, three of the freshmen have moms that work at the school. Yes, that definitely shows favoritism. I'm, you know, I mean, what more can you say really about that one? Um, three, she said, I did not know that trying to get more info, but regardless, I'm not um, in charge of advocating for that child. And then she said, four, um, whatever. <laughs> So, um, again, kind of your only options, right, are either to continue to pursue and pester them, um, which they're sounding like they've pretty much made up their mind and there's not much more that you can do. They are making some reasonable concessions to you. So, um, and I'm not sure that it would reach the threshold of discriminatory since they are so exclusionary in their place. Um, for the Office of Civil Rights violations. So um, you could still file a complaint. Now, they may dismiss it, right? But it is, there's nothing to stop you from filing a complaint if you wanted to. But the, the 
the way they're trying to reach out to you to help address this I would think that the Office of Civil Rights would see that as they're, you're, they're not being discriminatory. They are trying to find a way to let her participate. And so I think for an Office of Civil Rights complaint, it probably would be dismissed. So um, anyways, so I wanted to let you know, um, Julie, that's probably how that would go if you did something. So um, I really hate this for your daughter because I... I just, again, I don't see why she couldn't have a part even just on stage and she walks across the stage. I don't, I don't get it. Um, but, uh, you know, they're being that stubborn about it. It may be better just to let it go. And then another option, by the way, depending on how your daughter is, because like my daughter, Margaret, my daughter, Margaret, in a heartbeat, she'd perform a play of her own at our house. And she does this all the time. And you could very well let her learn the parts of the play or a part of the play and have her act it out at home. And you can be an audience and have kind of a version of the play at your own house, maybe even invite people over. Um, so something to think about because I would completely do that for my daughter <laughs> if she wanted to perform in front of people. Um, so Terry said, we are posting in the live video, but Facebook is still acting up. I know, right? So I can see your posts when you post to the group, Terry. So if you want to post whatever your question is, please do so in the group. And then I will look for it and I will answer your questions. Um, so, uh, Kaliri, I'm guessing Felicia, I think would be your first name. Um, she said, hi, my son has an IEP and he's in second grade. And I requested through my LEA um, rep to observe other programs in, uh, in schools in the district um, that potentially could fit him better. And she's been denied twice. So any idea what to do? She lives in Buck County, Pennsylvania. So yes, you need to ask them what is their policy that you want to see? What is their written policy? that denies you from seeing potential pl placements for your child. Some school districts do have policies and you know, there's no way for me to keep that up, to keep up with that. Since this is a national group, it can be really hard to keep up with something as specific as school district policy, but you do want to challenge them. And so how I would challenge them is to send an email and ask them to send you the information that it, where it is written that you may see with your own eyes why you were being denied the ability to go see potential placements for your child. Um, because they should be setting that up for you. There's no reason why you can't see them. Um, the only reason I've ever heard that might be, maybe, um, a potential reason is if you're doing this ahead of the IEP meeting, then they may claim that it is potential predetermination because we have sent you to a specific school to look at a specific placement, but we haven't had the IEP meeting yet to discuss placement. So that is the only one good counter argument I have ever heard for denying you to go view placement. Um, if that is the case, then you just want to move forward. Go ahead and have the IEP meeting have them tell you the, uh, you know, where they think they would like to place your child. And then you say, okay, but I'm going to go and view these placements before I agree. And um, then they should let you. I, again, I don't see why. And it always concerns me too, right? Like, why are they doing that? Um, they do mention uh, or often here it's based on the you know like student privacy, but HIPAA laws do not cover that. So, or sorry, FERPA law does not cover that. Does not cover it under HIPAA either. That's medical, but FERPA is the Privacy Act essentially for school students, and FERPA does not say that. So um, I'm always curious as to where they're getting that information. And the best way to do that is to ask via email so that you can document what it is that they're saying. Uh, let's see here. So let me go back up and make sure there aren't any other posts. Because what I'm doing is just reviewing the group now, just 
find out any if anybody's posted in the group. Um, so Molly posted and said, hello, I'm in Michigan and my son will be starting kindergarten in the fall. By the way, um, for all the states, I'm sure I have news articles and other things that have come out and you can search the group. So if you do not know how to search the group, let me know. Um, but I try to, when I post articles from a specific state, to use the hashtag and then whatever the postal code abbreviation is for the state. So for Michigan, it would be hashtag MI, and then you can search the group for information. And I will say Michigan is having a heck of a time in the special education category. Um, they've been come, the federal government has come down on them a few different times here just recently. Um, so do be aware of that. But she said that my son will be starting kindergarten in the fall. I met with um, an advocate to prepare my son's upcoming IEP meeting. That's good. Just be aware that whoever you you have as an advocate, I don't, you didn't say whether you paid for them or not, um, but whoever you have as an advocate is well versed in the law. You will be surprised at how many advocates charge a hundred plus dollars an hour and they really don't know what they're doing. So um, be very careful if you are paying out of pocket for an advocate. So um, she goes on to say, during the meeting, I mentioned that my husband and I haven't decided if we want to enroll our son in junior kindergarten or kindergarten. Our advocate said it may be tricky because it's not legal for a student with an IEP to be the oldest student in the classroom unless it's naturally occurring. All right, where the heck did they come up with that? I have never, ever, ever heard of that, ever, out of Michigan or anywhere. Never have heard of this. So your advocate, if they're going to say something, you need to ask them via email, right? We always do things via email, if possible. Why? It's for documentation purposes. Um, so you want to ask via email to your advocate, why did she say that? I'm assuming it's a lady. I don't know. It could be a man, but whoever, right? Why did they say that? Um, because you want to know what the rule, policy, or procedure, or law, whatever, that says that in writing. Because I have, I have not once ever heard that. Now, you will, again, have school district policy. You will have state law. Sometimes I'm not always aware of the school district policies or state law, but then again, most advocates probably in your area aren't either, honestly, because it's really difficult to keep up with and they can change easily from year to year. So um, if somebody's going to make a statement to you though like that, right, you should be able to back it up. Just as when I tell you things, whether it's on, you know, here at Facebook Live, it's on a YouTube video, it's in the group, Wherever it is that I'm telling you things, I don't want you just to take my word for it, right? Like, no, please never take my word for something that I'm telling you. I read a lot of information. I probably have forgotten more information that most, than most people even know. Um, and so it's important, though, that you know the information. I may know it, but you need to know it. And then just because I know it, you need to double check right? That that's still true or that uh, because again, policies change or the fact that you just need to know for yourself why I might would be saying what I'm saying. And so if your advocate can't back up what they're saying, that would really concern me um, as to the level of professionalism of your advocate. Um, so just some things to think about and be aware of when you have an advocate. Um, they should always be able to back up anything they say with evidence. And if they can't, you should be concerned. Um, so anyways, she just went on to say, can anyone confirm if this is true or, and or possibly provide more details? Yes, I, this makes no sense. Um, again, never heard of this ever. Um, so I'm quite curious as to what they think. Again, it could be a school district policy that I'm unaware of, but if you talk to your advocate, they should be able to tell you. 
um, and it, you will want to see like it's in writing. There's oftentimes, not just for advocates, but school districts and other people, right? They'll say like, this is our policy. Okay, great. Now show me in writing where that's the policy because schools must have everything in writing, right? You can't capriciously make up rules. And so once it's all written down, that's great. Like I get it, I can see it and therefore I can follow it, right? But if I can't see the policy written somewhere, then it's a verbal policy. And it may not really be a policy at that point. What it is, is this is what customarily is done. And that is very different. Customarily, you may not have the person, um, a child in there who's the oldest in a group, right? But that does not mean that you cannot have a child who's oldest in there. So, very important to always check and ask. Show me the written policy. <laughs> policy, rule, regulation, law. Where is it that you pulled this information from? And they really need to be able to supply it to you. So, um, and then a few other people had responded to that comment and said the same thing. What, like, I don't even know what the heck you're talking about. So, um, let me see. So Melissa wrote, so I can see some comments here. So I'm gonna address these, okay? And I just want you to know, please be patient with me. I'm trying to work through these things. So Renee says, um, does resource room time need to be made up if my student is absent or if my student is tardy? So unfortunately, no. Um, if your student is late um, or your child is late and it's your fault, then that's just kind of considered lost time and it's not made up um, because that's your responsibility basically. Um, now, if the instructor is not there, the therapist or the teacher, that's potentially different. Now, if it's something short term, the school won't do anything about it. But if it is something long term, then the school will do something about it. I mean, it's worthy to push the school to do something about it, I should say. And so therefore, you will want to ask for compensatory education. Um, but you would need to document like a good chunk, right? So at least a month's worth where your child has been denied services because their provider, whether it was a teacher or whether it was um, a teacher or a therapist was not present, then um, you would say, hey, they haven't been getting the services they've needed for the equivalent of a month and therefore we want our compensatory services. So, um, so does resource room have to be a special ed teacher? Technically, no. Um, it is just a category kind of on the continuum of least restrictive environment, LRE. And often you can service a child by doing push in work. However, again, it depends on how severe is your child because if your child is needing a paraprofessional in the general education classroom, that is less restrictive. Um, but sometimes as a child gets older, say once they've moved into middle school or high school, they don't want a paraprofessional with them in the general education classroom because either general education students are making fun of them or um, they're worried about general education students making fun of them. So it may be better um, to go ahead and if, you know, if that's the case, to let them go to resource where they can kind of get their help and work done privately. Um, so you kind of have to balance that out, right? Like between getting them to help but, and wanting them to be inclusive, but then being aware of their feelings about having mainstreaming and inclusivity. And, and you didn't mention like, what's the age of your child? And so I think that potentially could play a role in it. Also, you know, how does your child feel? I don't know if, if you've thought to even ask, you know, do they want to be in the mainstream setting and potentially have a paraprofessional help them? Or would they rather just leave and go into a um, resource room and work with a special education teacher? So um, Melissa, she goes, I posted my question here and on the group page. And so I hope you can see it. And 
I believe I answered your question already, Melissa. Um, so Capri, no, not really. You don't have to just have a, um, a special education teacher in the resource room. Also, it depends on what is your child in the resource room for. You know, would it be better served by having a math teacher there? So I'm not quite sure where you're going with that question. So if you want to, you know, please go ahead and kind of expand on that. And um, let's see. So Felicia said she had been asking since last year, and she goes, thank you, I will try that. They keep saying that they can handle him, but on Monday I had to call the police. Oh, well, that's not handling him at all. <laughs> So um, on Monday, they had to call the police. Uh-oh. My stuff just moved. Anyways, um, yes, it, I did catch the fact they had to call the police. Facebook is killing me tonight. So if they're having to call the police, right, they aren't handling it. <laughs> I mean, you can't even begin to say you're handling it if you're calling the police. So one of the things you may want to consider doing is um, – Go ahead and writing, if, if your child does not have an FBA, a functional behavior assessment yet, I highly recommend you write a letter immediately now that they have called the police, because if they call the police once, they'll call the police again. So you want to ask for that functional behavior assessment to be done. And when that's done, they will do a behavior intervention plan. And that theoretically is what's supposed to be done to control the behavior of your child in the classroom. You may find that the person who does this um, functional behavior assessment is not as qualified as you would like them to be. And if that is the case, then after um, either you tried the BIP that was made from the FBA, and by the way, if you do not know what these acronyms are, please read my blog post on special education terms to know. I took the time to kind of define all of these um, in those blog posts, and hopefully you will find them very helpful. But um, if there is a problem, right, that like you tried it and then your child is still acting out and they're still needing to call the police, you will definitely want to ask for an IEE or if you know that the plan they have developed um, will not be effective, then you might want to go ahead and still ask for the IEE at that point. Anyways, um, so just some things to consider because, again, if they called the police on your child, that's terrible. Um, and I would be greatly concerned because um, they will do it again. And there's always the potential for your child to be hurt by the police. So do be very careful. Um, let's see. So, yeah, it's weird because I can't see all of the comments. I can just see some of them. <laughs> um, anyways, let's see. So Melissa, group page, Renee. Um, re answered Renee's question. Oh, and then she, she just posted here and I see, she said, how can we better advocate for extended school year outside of regression and recruitment? Very easy. You need to know what it is that your state says because each state is different. And this is why I hound you guys in your posts to please post your state. And even those of you who have been in the group for a while, Please be aware, this is nothing against you. This is totally me and my issue, but I don't ever remember um, what state you guys are from. Even if I've helped you several times before, I never remember. It's just one of those things that falls out of my head. So I'm constantly asking, so be aware. It's not you, it's a me problem. <laughs> um, but for, um, and I see the Renee Root, Michigan. So I will post Michigan's extended school year um, requirements and I will, um, I will go ahead and, and put that up this evening for you. And so that's what you need. But if you were going to argue for extended school year, I highly encourage you to do so much earlier in the year. It's getting really late to have a school consider your child for extended school year, especially if you're arguing for something outside of that regression um, recruitment, recoupment. Um, and part of that is because they need a head count, you know, to, in order, and to accurately staff 
right now school districts are determining what staffing they're going to even have for the next school year. And usually you start addressing extended school year, um, yeah, extended school year issues back in January or February. So um, like I said, it's getting a little late, but it is potentially worth a shot. And I will, like I said, post that information for you, Renee. So Melissa said, no, our question hadn't been addressed yet. So I will look for it here in just a moment. Um, and Capri was saying she's in Michigan too. As I said, if you look for hashtag Michigan and search the group, you'll be surprised at how many news articles I've posted lately talking about how um, kind of severe the issue is in Michigan concerning special education. It's significant. Um, Oh, and so Renee was saying that she has read them, and so they're um, open to debate things like window of opportunity, and it seems like they just want to send extra work home. So they probably do, because they don't want to pay a teacher to sit down with your child and do extended school year. <laughs> so um, that is something to think about, and um, kind of start, you, you would have to gather data, right? So, um, but we can talk about that more in the group. I think that would that would be good because um, potentially there are several things that we could cover and see about what we could do to try to get your child extended school year. Um, so Melissa was saying she's in Illinois, and so I I will look here for your comment. Um, Rochelle was saying, can the school force me into due process if I refuse services and decide to do private therapy? We are homeschooling in New Mexico. No, Minnesota, sorry. <laughs> My moment of dyslexia. So um, if you, no, they cannot, um, because if you are truly homeschooling in your state, they cannot force you to accept services, especially if you say the services that you would provide, I'm already providing for my child through private medical therapy. So, um, and Melissa, yes, I do need that information about Maryland, I'm sure. Everybody forgets their state, so y'all don't feel bad. <laughs> um, so, and again, do post any of these if I don't get to your question. Post them in the group, because as you know, I will swing through and I answer things. Um, so, let's see. Um, Terry was saying, if you can see my post, you can skip my question since it's a long one and I've learned a lot tonight from you already. Well, thank you, Terry. I mean, I'm glad you've learned a lot. Um, but um, that doesn't mean that I won't answer your question. I may not answer it in this Facebook uh, or in this Facebook live chat, but that doesn't mean that I won't necessarily address it in the group. So um, again, all of you who have posted in the group, do be aware I will swing back through and I will answer everything in the group. So don't panic. Um, and, uh, and and I say that like I'll answer as soon as I can because again I've been trying to answer posts today and it just won't let me so I'm trying but I'm not seeming to be successful for some reason I don't know why um, so let me see if I can find Melissa's um, <laughs> Sorry here, bear with me for just a moment. Um, Michelle, Melissa, I am really sorry because I cannot, I don't see your question at the moment, just sort of scrolling through the group. So if you want to post it again, like you can just copy and paste it, um, or if you can tag me in it, either one that'll help pull my attention to where your post is, um, and then I will try to answer it. Again, Facebook is being super glitchy tonight. I don't know what the problem is. Um, so I will work through everything um, like I usually do. I usually answer everything in there fairly quickly. Um, and so I will try to make sure that I do get these answered pretty promptly as soon as I can respond. Um, so let me go back up here and answer hers and her technical difficulties. And so I do see Jessica had said um, in the Facebook Live event. So if you, Melissa, decide you want to repost your question, if you could put it in this Facebook Live event, the, what was it, the movie thing, um, I can see comments there too. So um, you can potentially post it here. 
So I'm going to read Jessica's question real quick. She goes, um, Jessica said, I've considered representing myself in the state level due process. So we talked about that. And then she said, are you aware of any due process proceeding in any state where the parent won their case and the district employees who violated the federal education law suffered any consequences? Professional consequences such as firing or demotion, bad publicity, personal fines or anything. So um, normally what happens, and this is one of the things that I kind of hate about special education, is that if you decide to proceed to due process, normally very little happens. The school districts are required to develop new you know, guidelines and policies and to retrain their staff. Um, you, there are cases where parents have been awarded damages. Um, there are cases where you can go on to file a civil suit um, where you can win damages. Again, this is something that Jackie can really speak to. Jackie has represented herself several times um, for things concerning her son. She does an amazing job. And um, I know that she would have a lot of personal experience to share with you for doing due process herself as a parent. Um, and so, and she'll tell you a lot of times things don't really change that she has to continue filing due process and state complaints. Um, and I think at one time she's had like two or three due process cases against her school district just for her children. So um, yeah, there's really not much in the way of consequences and it's really difficult to have any of anybody really in particular be held accountable for much of anything unfortunately the best thing usually you can get out of it is compensatory education whether that means compensatory education the school is then required to provide the compensatory education or compensatory education they're going to pay to send your child somewhere for them to be tutored at some tutoring facility so, um, and usually if you as a parent can walk away with the school district doing that. Most parents will take that because it's not, um, and the lawyer gets paid because if you win your due process case, the lawyer can sue the school for their fees. That's kind of what I was talking about earlier, right? That you, it's not uncommon for special education attorneys to take your case on contingency knowing that once they're done with your case they will ask the school district to pay their fees so um, just some things to think about um, as to what you want to do and like I said Julie and Jackie in particular are very knowledgeable about the filing of due process um, and then you know again we can help you with reading the complaint and help you with the law aspect. So, um, yeah, Jennifer just reported, and I thought this is great news. Jennifer said, super excited. I found out I won our state complaint regarding allowing testing accommodations for iReady. And so iReady, I feel certain, is a state assessment, and I'm thinking it was in Nevada, but I'm sure other states use it. Um, but yeah, they, she won her state complaint. So yay, great job, Jennifer. I love hearing about that when you guys are able to make progress. And so I think that's amazing. Um, also, like I said earlier, you know, that Julie was able to successfully advocate for an extra year for her child over at her local high school. So I'm, I'm really glad that the information you guys have been getting from this group have helped you to go on and to advocate for your children. So I find that really exciting. Um, so Melissa said, like I, she said that she was in Maryland. And so um, again, you can comment in the group or tag me or potentially write a comment in the group and maybe I'll be able to see it. I'm not sure. It's been so glitchy <laughs> tonight. But I think all of you who have turned out, um, quite a few people have turned out and I appreciate it knowing that we are having such a major issue with Facebook. I know everybody's having a difficult time. Um, so let's see. So are there any other questions here that I can see as I'm kind of sweeping back through? 
And again, feel free to go ahead and post your question if you have a question, um, either in the Facebook Live thread. Um, apparently, I can see some of the things through the group. And then um, also, if I don't answer your question for some reason, please make sure you make a post in the group and then I will answer it there. So one way or another, you should be able to get an answer um, to your question. Um, let's see, so I answered that. So at this moment, I'm not seeing any more questions. I'm sure y'all probably are typing them and if so, I'm terribly sorry. Um, Cause it, I don't know, Facebook. <laughs> Who would have thought? It's been quite a while since Facebook has had kind of a major technical glitch, right? Um, but let's see. All right. So right now I'm not seeing any more questions and we're at right about an hour for tonight. So tonight we may just go ahead and stop the video since Facebook is being so glitchy. Um, and then please post your questions to the group and um, uh, I just saw Michelle post. So Michelle was saying, what happens when your child is in a contained classroom and you cancel the IEP? So Michelle, I did actually answer your question earlier. Um, so um, I tried to answer it like in the group posting, but it keeps giving me an error message. Anyways, so I'm concerned because if you cancel the IEP, then you have no rights to due process technically, right? Now, the school can deny you trying to cancel services. I mean, part of it depends on if your child is severe enough that you're, the school has determined that your child needs an IEP and then you try to cancel special education services and leave your child in that school and, you know, kind of, at, yeah, in that school. Um, what's going to happen is the school can then try to refuse um, denying your child services and take you to due process. I believe that's something similar to what happened to Julie and Julie, uh, the other admin to this group, would be able to speak more to that. But um, Julie wound up pulling her child to homeschool and they were still trying to take her to due process. So um, I would not try to cancel services. Instead, I would just take them to due process. And um, hopefully you can find a special education attorney in your area who will take your case on contingency. Um, but if not, then it still doesn't hurt for you to take them to due process. As I said, due process, though intimidating, um, and you know, you're up against a lawyer from the school district, um, the judges who oversee due process understand parents have the right to represent themselves and are more lenient with parents in a due process proceeding because you are not a lawyer and you do not have legal training. Um, and so, you know, they're fairly generous with you. You just need to know how to write and write reasonably well. And then if you need help with that, again, you can post it to the group and the group can um, help you with that, not only with um, the aspect of what was written, but also help you with potentially any law that may have been violated. And so Michelle was saying he changed schools due to anxiety and he has improved 90% when he moved. So you moved him to a new school his anxiety has greatly reduced, and so therefore you're wanting to cancel his IEP. Is that correct? And I was going to say, if that is the case, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cancel it. Why would you want to cancel it? Because he may be doing well now, but if he's not in high school, right, he's going to proceed on to high school. And matter of fact, she just said he's 10 and in Illinois. So no, I wouldn't get rid of his IEP. I would keep it because as he transitions, right now he should still be in elementary school. As he transitions into middle school and high school, children with anxiety tend to have an increase in anxiety. Not only social anxiety because there can be more peer pressure, especially at the middle school level. Like peer pressure at the middle school level is extreme. 
um, but also even into high school. And then, then in high school, it's more of a, you know, personal, they're putting pressure on themselves because they know they need to academically perform. Um, so she was asking me, would he be on a stay put while going, going through due process? He could be. So is the school trying to remove his IEP? Um, and then Melissa said, I tried tagging you in my post, but it won't bring up your name until I tag you. So yes, that's part of my problem. I've been telling you about Melissa, like it's been tough tonight. Um, so Michelle, um, and so she said he's in fifth grade and he, he hates it. So he hates what, what is it that he is hating? Because an IEP is one of the greatest tools that you can have. You can have a 504, but a 504 doesn't kind of have the same bite legally, and it doesn't give parents clear-cut avenues for ways to argue with the school. And that's kind of the reason I really dislike 504s is because there's no law really spelled out for 504 for avenues of complaint. Um, it is up to your school district and you would have to get that information from your school district and then kind of go from there. And like I said, it can be really difficult um, when you have a 504 to get the school to act and do anything. Whereas if you have an IEP, you get, you have a little bit more oomph because you have the law that's behind you and it clearly spells out um, procedures for when you are complaining against the school. So, um, Melissa, like I said, don't worry too much about it. You can either copy and paste the whole comment here um, where I can see your comments or um, again, this evening at some point I'll sweep through and I will look for your post and try to answer it. If I cannot answer it tonight, then I will answer it tomorrow because hopefully by tomorrow, Facebook will have whatever glitch that they've got going on resolved. Surely. Um, so Michelle said, no, she wants to remove it. They believe he was being groomed by a faculty member, hence the anxiety. And yes, um, I've thought of the 504. So um, no, I would keep the IEP, but you could change things around. Um, so they believe, who's they, they who, or believe that he was being groomed by a faculty member, because that would be really concerning, right? Um, and you would want it to where he has no more contact with whoever this faculty member is. Um, and so, yeah, so like I said, the 504 has a lot less um, kind of procedural safeguards in place for you to complain about things. So you'd be want to be really careful about that. Plus, like I said, what if his anxiety ramps up again when he changes schools? Because he's close to going to middle school. And you normally will see anxiety again go through the roof because there is so much more involved in middle school, having multiple subjects in a day, changing classes, um, the ridiculous amount of peer pressure, and other things going on. So it's not uncommon to see a huge spike in anxiety when a child enters into middle school and again when they enter into high school. So, um, but it's too long to properly show up on there. Okay, so um, it, right after my last comment on Michelle's. Okay, so I will look for this, like I said, and we'll sweep back through and kind of answer these things. Um, it's again really difficult tonight. I'm so sorry, um, but I will get them all answered, so don't worry. Um, I did want to answer Michelle's or Melissa's question real quick, which was, my son had an incident last week where he was accused of punching another child. He's in second grade, um, and he is in a regional behavior program and has an IEP and a BIP. And she goes, I'm working on getting him out of the school and program. It's not a good fit for him. Yes, you have to really watch it because if your child winds up in a what they call a class D placement school for behavior, that means your child in the school's eyes, it has some of the worst behavior of any other student and they kind of shift them to these alternative schools. And then it can be really hard to bring them back 
to the home school. So hopefully you won't find that to be the case. Um, that's really interesting. Let me see. Uh, oh, well, that's really interesting. So I saw your post, but I didn't get to finish reading it, Melissa. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And I just clicked and like, I can see there's a lot of comments in the thread, but I can't see all the comments. I can only see four comments at a time. So part of the glitch is for tonight. So don't worry, because if you did comment in this thread and I can't see your comment now, don't worry, because at some point I should be able to see all the comments in the thread and then I'll come through and I'll be able to address and answer all of your comments. Um, so, oh good, Michelle said that he did leave that school. So when the school of the police, they called the police on him, she did pull him out of that school, which is really good. Um, and yes, so um, also she goes, I don't want the self-contained classroom and I'll address that more, I think, later when I have better access to Facebook and like I can see stuff and make comments. Because um, again, it's just so glitchy tonight. <laughs> I'm not having much success. And so I'm terribly sorry because this I know is a little frustrating for you all because you're here in order to get answers to your questions. But do remember if you post in the group, I will be able to see your question at some point and be like be able to actually answer it. Um, cause again, I'm trying to post in my group and I, I just can't, it keeps coming up with that error message saying we can't post it this time. And it's really driving me crazy. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Oh, and then Michelle just said, yes, um, be careful, Melissa. They tried to do that to my kid and it will be impossible to get him out. And so, yeah, it can be really difficult to get some of your children kind of back out of these class D level placement settings because the school has essentially deemed your child, um, for lack of a better word, as a troublemaker. Not really, I don't know, kind of taking into consideration the fact that um, your child's behaviors are probably based on them not being appropriately supported in the educational environment. So um, just, you know, don't worry too much about it, but um, you should be able to pull them out through least restrictive environment, like making the argument for least restrictive environment. And again, if you aren't sure what LRE, least restrictive environment is, or what it means, or what it implies, please take time to read my blog post on special education terms to know. Um, there are three of them, part one, part two, and part three. They were so creatively named by me. Um, but in those part one and part two and part three, I cover a lot of really important information. And I tried really hard not to make those part of, you know, like the standard thing you see on Facebook where they're just defining LRE means least restrictive environment. No, I went into some detail um, and took the time to go into detail about what exactly does that mean? And then I took um, a lot of the references that I have for that information and then hyperlinked it. So please make sure when you do go through those posts, you take time to click on those hyperlinks as it takes you to resource material, including guidance from OSAP and elsewhere. Um, so Melissa was saying his behavior is not that bad. He has multiple diagnoses that hinder him. If his behavior is not that bad, then I'm not entirely sure why he would be there then. Um, so again, it might be worthwhile to kind of fight for that LRE, that least restrictive environment and kind of go from there. So, um, but again, we can help you with that. And that's something I can help you with in this group. Hi, James. Oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> he hasn't fed me in three weeks. Uh huh. He looks like it too, right? So I have given him no food in three weeks. <laughs> Um, no, he wants dinner too, is what he wants. We have, we had breakfast one, two, and three this morning, then lunch, and then now he wants dinner too. Um, very hungry kid today. So anyways, um, don't be concerned. I will, like I said, address these questions. I know you guys have some really important stuff going on. Um, so I will try to get to them as soon as I can when I'm allowed to post in my own group. So um, 
Anyways, thank you tonight for joining me through Facebook's glitchiness. I know this has been a bit of a trial. As I said, do be aware too, I am looking to start a Facebook live um, chat on Facebook channel. I think that might be a good platform for us also. Um, and again, I'm working on AESA's site. Let's see, you can see right there. <laughs> I wrote it up on my board, my whiteboard back here, AESA. And um, that is my nonprofit, and we are working on a revamping our website. And in revamping our website, um, we will, I'm hoping, have our own forum. And so we will be able to chat um, on our own forum on that website. So um, Melissa was saying that his bad behavior is mainly affected by sensory overload. Well, that can easily be addressed, and you can still easily address that in um, his IEP. So um, do be aware, right, that um, I would keep the IEP, but you can greatly modify it. So um, the IEP, you can make goals to address his sensory issues, and I would encourage you to do so. And I have a unit. Um, I talk about units on here quite a bit. And I do have a unit in our group called Sensory. And I have some resources there for you. And then also, if that doesn't address what you're needing, let me know, and um, I will find additional resources for you. So Michelle said they added a para to his new class, but said general, general ed with a para would be more restrictive. That's not true, Michelle. Don't let them get away with that. Um, general ed with a para is not more restrictive than a resource class with a para educator. It's just not, um, because FAPE says um, that you are, no, sorry, least restricted environment says that a child is to be educated in the least restrictive environment with all supplementary aids and services. Well, guess what falls under supplementary aids and services? Paraprofessionals do. So um, it is less restrictive for them to be in the general education setting with a paraprofessional than it is to be in the resource room. So it's a budget thing. That's what they try to do. They try to tell you that so they don't have to pay for a paraprofessional. Um, anyways, so I just wanted to let all of you know what was going on. I'm really glad that we were able to do this, even though it was a bit of a pain this evening. Um, thank you all for hanging out with me. Um, again, if you have any other questions, either put your um, comments or questions in this thread. And then when Facebook resolves, I will go through and I will answer them um, besides looking through the group to try to find posts also that haven't been answered today because I just haven't been able to make any comments really in the group. So um, I think that's it for this evening. So please, um, <laughs> Michelle says you're hired. <laughs> Yes, well, and I will work with you both in the group, so in the Facebook group, and then when we have our forum, you know, I'll be working for free, like I'll answer questions and supply help. Um, and then if you are a member of AESA, which that'll start up in the 1st of April, um, then you can retain my advocacy help for $20 an hour, which is a bargain. Um, my advocates local in my area um, for the level of expertise that I have, they charge a minimum of $100 an hour. Um, so me charging $20 an hour is, is a serious bargain in comparison to many of the advocates out there. And as I said, I am, I, I consider myself to be quite well educated in, in the issues of special education. So, um, all right, well, thank you again so much. Please post your comments. I will comment um, on everything as soon as I can. So you guys have a good night, and I will see you next Wednesday. So don't forget, we'll do this again. We'll do it next Wednesday. We may be meeting on um, YouTube instead of here, but I will let you know if I can get everything up and running on YouTube. If not, it will be here in the group again. So all right. Well, thank you very much. Have a good night, and I will see you guys next week.